your purpose, and your desire is to bring revival to the world, Father. To make the gospel known, God, not only to us, but the entire world, God, to bring people to Christ, to prepare them for heaven, Father. So I pray for a Holy Ghost revival in our lives this morning. I pray that you take charge of this service, take charge of the words that you give me, Father, moved by the Holy Ghost. We desperately need you this morning in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The spoken word <coughs> is heard when we're in His presence. That's right. In His presence is fullness of joy and at His right hand our pleasures forevermore. Yes. See, the church cannot be healthy and cannot be strong unless God has mercy on us. Amen. Unless we purify ourselves. Unless we walk closely and powerfully with Christ. That's right. We need to walk closely Jesus Christ. That's right, every minute. Otherwise, let's start asking the Lord, every one of us, to have mercy on us. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to purify us. Yes, yes. Cleanse us of all of our sins, all yes. of our shortcomings. Come on. Everything that we know we're doing wrong. Come on. You want revival? You need to ask God to change you. From glory to glory into His perfect image. Your pastor cannot change you. I wish I could. But I'm not God. I can preach the gospel and thank God for the gospel and ask God to change it through His Word because when His, spoken, when His Word is spoken, you're in His presence. And He's there amongst us. Amen. We need God to heal us. Some of us are carrying hurts from years. Some of us are carrying hurts from the present. Some of us are carrying inner hurts in our hearts. They need to be healed. They need to be dissolved by God. Sweet Lord. God needs to shake us. Amen? Amen. Come on. God's been speaking to me, folks. God needs to shake us. He needs to shake the foundation of your Christianity and your walk in God. He needs to shake you. Come on. And wake you up. To who we really are in Christ. Amen. Come on. Amen. I can feel you this morning. Come on. Spring God wants to do something with your hearts this morning. Amen. Come on. So my question to you is: Do you really want revival? Come on. Yes. Do we want revival? Yes. yes. We need revival. Do you want to see Amen. people saved and home? Amen. Do you want revival in the church? Revival in your home, revival in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on. Revival starts with you. Amen. So at the end of the service, I'm going to ask everybody in this church to do something. And I'm not going to tell you until the end of the service. <laughs> now you're all going, oh, oh. So instead of seeking God for what He can do, that's the wrong way to seek God. We need to seek God for who He is. We need to seek Him for who He is. You want to get close to God, you got to know who He is. Come on. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 17:8, David said to the Lord, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Yes, Father. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Yes. For under the shadow of your wings I find security. Yes, we do. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Have you ever thought about that? God, I want your presence no matter where I go, no matter where I am, I want your presence. I want you to be there with me. Whether I'm in the grocery store, whether I'm at a gas station, whether I'm at work, whether I'm at school, whether I'm at home, whether I'm at church, Hide me under the shadow of your wings. I want to be in your presence. I want your presence to be in me. That's revival. Yes, it is. That's Holy Ghost revival. That's climate change. That's real. That's changing your desires for the desire of God. 
Having God in your life is more than what we can do for God. Because if you have God in your life, God will allow you to do so much. That's right. It'll blow your mind up. If we want to see our town and our church experience revival, we first need to experience personal revival. Personal revival. Church is more than just coming to church. Yes, indeed. Christianity is just more believing in Christ. That's right. Being a child of God is changing everything you are. I walk with Him and talk with Him. Amen. Everything you are. Everything humanly possible Amen. that you Amen. are Amen. into the Spirit of God. Amen. Have you ever thought of that? Amen. So I want to take you through eight steps to revival. Kind of like an A from here. But this is a JC meeting. Who's in your house? Come on. Man, you know the song. Number one, to have personal revival, you have to reject fear. The devil wants to bring fear to your heart, saying you'll always be this way. You'll never change. Yeah. No matter what God does, you won't change. And some people don't because they don't listen to God. But if you want personal revival, you have to listen to God. And reject the fear. That's right. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of what? A power. Power. He gave us power over fear. So we can have a sound mind. That's right. And have perfect peace cast out all fear. Amen. Amen. And he said he'll give those whose mind is stayed upon him perfect peace. Yes, he will. Peace is the opposite of fear. Huh. You want peace in your home? Then you've got to bring everything in that home to God. Come on. And don't fear what's going on. Come on. Allow God to handle it. You want peace in your own personal walk with Christ? Then you have to bring your life to Christ. Oh God, I can't change. What... <laughs> and we go to the Lord with so much anxiety because we're so full of fear. Come on. God didn't give you the spirit of anxiety. That comes from the devil. That's not in God's repertoire. Fear's not in God's repertoire. Hallelujah. Paralyzing fear and anxious despondency are not God's will for your life. Those aren't God's will for your life. Those come from a different source. Jesus commands us not to fear. There are over 300 scriptures throughout the Bible that Jesus speaks to us about our fears. 300 of them. That's how important it is not to fear. Fear not, for lo and behold, I shall always be with you. He says, do not be anxious for nothing. That's it. He says, do not be afraid. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Yes. Over and over and over again, he's talking to us about our fears because we live in our fears. Come on. Every time a problem comes, we live in the problem. Instead of taking the problem to God and saying, Lord, i got this new problem. Can you have it here? You take this problem and show me what I'm supposed to do. Don't let the problem overcome you. You overcome the problem. Amen? Sometimes I'll, I'll talk with my wife and she'll say, what are you going to do? I say, I don't know. I'll just give it to God. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll give it to the Lord and see what He does. Whatever He does. You must believe. Amen. Amen. What He does, He does. The enemy wants to bring you fear. Why? To intimidate you. He wants to intimidate you, keep you from the freedom that God wants you to live in. There's such a great freedom God wants us to live in. Amen. Amen. He doesn't want us to walk around in fear, despondency, and being anxious and full of worry. You know what worry does? It gives you white hair. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh -oh. <laughs> White hair is wisdom from the Lord. Let me say that. Worry changes nothing but you. Worry escalates fear. That's right. That's what worry does. It escalates your fear. 
and gives you, and you know, a lot of people die from heart attacks because they're so right. worried, they get so full of fear, they can't even act right. They're paranoid, like my cat, you know, my cat will be, Max would just be laying there. All I gotta go is like that, he's gone. <laughs> he's gotta move, he's gone. I call him scaredy cat. Oh, you little scaredy cat. Hallelujah. We've always, always, must believe that God is in charge of our lives. He's in charge. We're not. He'll help us in our fears. Don't dwell on anxiety. Don't dwell on the dangers of life. Fix your mind on Christ. Bring those to Jesus. Allow Him to help. Amen. Amen. Secondly, to have personal revival, you have to resist anger. Life itself can produce unwanted anger. Amen? Amen. I'll give you a few examples. Losing a job. A flying J. A business. A place you're working in. Your health. A loved one. You become angry at your boss. You become angry at your prime minister. You become angry at your pastor. You become angry at the rich. You become angry at the poor. You're angry at countries. You're angry at races. You're angry at a family member. You're angry at your church members. You're just angry. Everything in life makes you angry. Unwanted anger. God didn't make us angry people. No, he did. Amen? Amen? So why are we angry? at things, because we allow things in life to make us angry. Jesus didn't allow things to make him angry. He had righteous anger when people were defiling his God, that made him angry. But that was righteous anger. Amen? So don't dwell on anger. Personal revival deals with self. You want revival? Deal with yourself. You need to deal with yourself. And Jesus will help us and give you personal revival. Ephesians 4, 26 says, Be angry and sin not. Amen. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. That's right. Come on. Where does anger come from? Neither give place to the devil. It comes from the devil. The devil wants to steal your joy, so he makes you angry. The devil wants to steal other people's joy, so it makes you an angry person in front of other people. And then everybody's angry. Everybody got up in a good mood, but ten minutes later, everybody's angry. I was at a, a party just a while ago. It's it a family thing. Everybody's having a good time until this one individual walks in. He was angry said three words and changed the whole atmosphere in the whole room. We left five minutes later. It's a bad spirit. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in the presence of an angry person. Amen? I want to be in the presence of joy, peace, love. Those are the fruits of the spirit. Amen? Personal revival. Remember, if you want revival, you have to change yourself. You have to deal with yourself in order for God to bring revival in the church. Because we personally have to represent Christ. We are representing Christ. People won't stay in the church if they see somebody that is representing something other than Christ. Amen. Somebody say something to you. Like, well, what's that got to do with you? Welcome to the friendly church of Hope and See. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you came. You know? Amen. So resist anger. How do you resist anger? How do you deal with anger? Hold your tongue. Think before you talk. Hold your tongue. Amen. The Bible says that any man can hold his tongue. Mark that man, for he is a perfect man. 
why does the Bible say that? Because the tongue is a fire that no man can tame. If any man, that's before that scripture, if any man tames his tongue, mark that man, he's a perfect man. It's hard to deal with our anger, isn't it? Personal revival, dealing with these things will bring you closer to Christ. You'll be more like Christ. That's his aim, is to make you more like him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thirdly, we have to deal with our pride. I don't have any pride, Pastor. When a person tells you they don't have any pride, they're full of pride. That's right. Pretty simple. That's right. We all have pride. And it's good. There's good pride. You work, you take pride in your work, you take pride in your children and their accomplishments, you take pride in your wife and your husband, and that, that's, that's good pride. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking about selfish pride. We have to deal with our selfish pride. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, God resists the proud. I don't want God to resist me. But gives grace to the humble. Now this next thing I'm going to say is something that I really believe. Pride, at its very essence, is a disagreement with God. Because you're saying you're right, He's wrong. Come on. Amen? Amen. It is the ultimate act of independent self-determination. Mm. I will do what I want to do. Come on. Neither God's will nor His Word carry any weight in the heart of a proud man. Amen. God can't change a proud man. Amen. Until He strikes you off the horse. Like he did Paul. He gets a hold of you and opens your eyes as he sent Ananias to open Paul's eyes. God had to deal with him for three days before he could see properly. When we read the fall of Lucifer, we see firsthand pride displayed in its fullness. Isaiah 14, 13, 14 to 5 I wills. Good thing I wrote all this down. Amen. Isaiah 14, 13 to 14, speaks about the five I wills. And as I read these, I want you to think about your life. Think about your pride. Think about who you are, God. Because all of these spirits can be in us if we're not careful. The first one says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will be like God. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Otherwise, I'm going to serve God the way I think God should be served. I will believe the gospel the way I think it's supposed to be believed. Preach. I will make myself like a God. I want to have prevalence amongst the congregation. That's what it says here. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. I want preeminence in the congregation. I want to be first. I want everybody to know how great I am. The five I wills could be in our lives. Can you say amen? If we're not careful. That's why we need personal revival. That's why we need to deal with our lives and deal with ourselves. Now we can figure out why God resists the proud. Resist the word means to set oneself in battle against another. So when you resist the word of God, you're setting yourself against God. And you say, Lord, I am smarter than you. That's not what you meant. I interpret it differently. The Bible's not open for interpretation. Scripture said it's not open for interpretation. Amen. We're not allowed to interpret the gospel. God wrote it that way. That's the way he meant it. 
we interpret it differently, that means we're saying God is smarter than you. Wow. Wow. Where's your followers? Are you going to come back in the resurrection of Christ and take us home to your home? Not. Fourthly, we have to commit ourselves to a local congregation if you want personal revival. Where we spend time studying the Word of God together. Wasn't that great Bible study? I so enjoyed that. We better win another hour. Yeah. Where we spend time worshiping the Lord and encouraging fellow believers. That's why we go to church, to a local congregation. You can't do that as an independent person. That's impossible. Where we take communion one with another. And we are going to have communion soon. Just let you know. Where we lift up holy hands and praise the Lord together. That's why I say sometimes when I'm singing, let's lift up our hands and worship God. There's something powerful when people will just lift up their hands and say, I surrender all, God. I want personal revival. I surrender all I am to you. Touch me. That's what it means when you lift your hands to heaven. Touch me, Lord. I want all of you and less of me. Amen? Where we share our finances one to another. Giving to the church and giving to each other. You come and you, you give in the offering. And if there's needs from other people, you give to their needs. We have potlucks, you bring food. You know, and somebody gave us a turkey the other day. It was, Thank you. You know, I was ordered to buy a turkey by my wife. Now I don't have to, but somebody gave it to me. So we help each other in the Lord, in the local congregation. Where we fellowship with each other, sharing meals and spending time together, getting to know each other. We were at Walter and Ham's last week for dessert. I hope they invite me every week. I have that trifle every week. It was so, raspberry trifle, oh my goodness. It was so good. But the best part of that was the fellowship. There's tremendous fellowship, and that's what it's all about in the local congregation. The body of believers spending time with each other, enjoying each other's company. We ask Him to give you strength to walk away from our sins. Amen. See, we need personal revival. Amen. In the church and in our own lives. Number five, share the gospel. I can't share the gospel. I don't know. I'm shy. I don't have any courage. I don't know how. The devil will give you every excuse to keep you from winning someone in Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Too many Christians think they have no responsibility to share the gospel, even when they know people who are lost and going to hell. Not my responsibility. Let somebody else do it. Let pastor do it. You have a responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, yeah. each and every one of you. Amen. Right. Everybody here has to share the gospel. Amen. 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 Some level of our life. It says that He's called you out of darkness to the glorious light. into His glorious light to declare the praises of Him who has saved you. Amen. Go ye into all the nations and preach. The good news. Amen. He didn't just go to Peter and Paul and say, hey, you guys go into the nations. He said that to everybody. That's right. He no, trained no, no, no. all of his disciples to preach the gospel. Every one of them. He told them how to preach the gospel. The Bible says they preached the gospel so much they turned their world upside down. Amen. That's how you get revival. You personally ask God to give you courage and strength to preach the gospel. And then find somebody, a neighbor, a friend, just invite them over for supper. Be their friend. Tell them about Jesus if they, anything about God. You know how you get them to talk about God? You talk about God. You talk about the Lord. They'll leave us go, I don't believe in that. Or I believe in this. Well, they say, I believe in God. I went to Sunday school. Oh, really? Wow. Well, what made you quit? 
and just ask some personal questions in love and see what God will do. Or just invite someone to church and let the Word of God take care of them. Preaching the gospel is so simple. Amen. Amen. It is so simple. And it's so much fun to tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a young boy, 27, I'm 60 now. But I got saved when I was 27 years old, and I was working as a head chef in Harrison of the Black Forest. <clears throat> I lived in a fourplex for a top for the bottom. And there was a guy that lived in a little shack on the other side of me. And he was the boatman. He rode the boat back and down the river. He was foul mouthed, he was rude, he was arrogant, he was ignorant. And God told me to go preach to him. I said, what? <laughs> you know what he's like? I don't know how to preach to him. And he says, well, Easter's coming. Go ask him to come to church. So I went over to him and I said, hey, um, um, I don't know if you believe in Jesus Christ or not, but Easter's coming. Do we still come to church? <laughs> he goes, slow down, young man. <laughs> He says, well, Easter's the only time I do go to church. So Jack came to church with me. That was his name. We got to care of the rest. But after I, I, I got the boldness to go over, because I went out, I wanted revival. I wanted personal revival in me. And I went out to the beach four in the morning, three or four times. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? Top of my lungs three or four times. He says, I want you to preach the gospel. I says, and Lord, show me how. Show me what I have to do. Because I had I didn't have a clue how to preach the gospel. And he did. Over the years, he showed me how to do it. Not everybody's going to preach like your pastor. Not going to be as bold as me or, you know, Reggie or Walter. Everybody's going to preach the gospel differently. Because you all have different DNAs, you all have different characters, you all have different personalities. So just ask God how to do it. Amen? How do I do it, Lord? And then comes the easy part. Do it! No pass it that ain't easy. Oh, sure it is. Just do it. It becomes easy. Hallelujah. Revival in the local congregation can turn everything around where you want to preach the gospel because we can help each other become fruitful. Amen? The fear of the Lord is the foundation of intimacy with God. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord that God is to be feared means God is to be reverenced. That's it, right. God is to be served. That's right. Come and on. God is to be worshipped. That's right. That's the fear of the Lord. Yes. Is to have a healthy, honest, honorable respect for the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And to fear Him in everything you do. Amen. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Right. Hallelujah. And lastly, our seventh, repent. Well, and recommit. Huh. Why do I say that? I've already asked Christ into my life. I don't need to repent anymore. Just because you ask Jesus into your life, does that make you perfect? No. no. Does that make you saved? No. You can lose your salvation. That's right. I don't believe in eternal security. <laughs> I do not. You know why? Because you have a will. Amen. You can go and do whatever you want to do. And then put it, oh Lord, pray. He come to church. He looked like a sinner all week, then he come to church. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put on that smile. You know that smile. Amen. How's it going? Oh, fine. Amen. Amen. I just got loaded last night. Oh, fine. You got a terrible headache. Oh, fine. <laughs> Repent. 
Revelation 3, 2, 3 says, Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for it. Are you ready to die for Jesus? Yeah. Amen. For I have not found the works perfect before God. Are you ready to die to those things that are holding you back from Christ? Jesus says he has not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. Remember when you gave your life to Jesus and how you heard the gospel and how it brought you to Christ. And hold fast and repent. People think, they go to church and they think they don't have to repent of anything. We do. You know, repent it can go like this. You know, you hit your thumb with a hammer and you swear Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. That's repentance. Forgive me, Lord. Amen. 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 Because you fear the Lord. Oops. <laughs> you know, sorry, Lord. It's coming before God and keeping your heart clean because you want personal revival. Purify yourself before the Lord and keep revival going in your life. Amen. I'm not saying be perfect. Because no man is perfect except Christ. But I'm saying strive for perfection that's found in that's Jesus Christ. That's the difference. Found. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. People walk over past us we're supposed to be perfect. Remember, in Jesus Christ. Amen. So revival begins with a self-evaluation of our lives. We have to go before God and say, Lord, this is me. I'm evaluating myself before you. I have things I need to clean up before you. I have things I need to do. I'm not walking right. I'm not believing right. I'm not trusting you right. Come on. I'm full of fear. I'm full of anxiety. I'm full of pride. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. God, help me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Show me. And keep revival alive in your heart. Ask Jesus to show you areas of unconfessed sin in your life. Well, I don't sin, Pastor. We all fall short of the glory of God. None are righteous, no, not one. Every day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Every day. Amen. Then ask Jesus to forgive you. And cleanse you by his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ will set us free. Yes, it will. Amen? Amen. Got about an hour left. Let the Spirit move you. 1 John 1 9 says that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. How can Christ forgive us of our sins if we never confess them? Amen. And you know the reason why you never confess your sin? It's because you have too much pride. You're full of pride. You know what pride will make you do? Pride will make you believe you're right before God when you know you're wrong. That's what pride will do. It'll keep you from being right before God. Lastly, oh, it says, and just to... And, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Lastly, rediscover the power of prayer and fasting. Go without food? I can't do that. Why not? Best out of Words of my sermon. Why not? Why can't you fast? Because we love the flesh. That's why. We have to feed the flesh. Fasting will keep you in revival. It will show you who you are. I confess I cannot fast anymore because of my kidney transplant or the pills I had. So I can't do it. But when I used to fast, it used to drive my wife crazy. 
She says, can't you go get a hotel room? <laughs> You're so miserable. After the, about the third day, you know, you get a little miserable picture. Kind of, kind of, your flesh kind of comes alive. You become who you really are. God shows you who you are. Fasting cleanses you. It brings you before God and God shows you who you are. And then you change before God. God's got to help you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18 says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Well, Pastor, that'll look pretty stupid standing in the store, but walking down the street, they'll lock me up. Pray without ceasing means to pray all the time. You can pray in your heart, pray in your spirit, pray before God. I go downstairs sometimes and sit in my chair and I pray, or I'll sit on my desk hang my head on the table and pray. Or sit upstairs in my chair in the morning and pray. Find a place of prayer. Talk to God about yourself. And then pray for others. Pray for your prime minister. Pray for the world. Pray for people. God needs to hear your prayers. Why, well, he understands everything. Yeah, but God wants you to hear your prayers. It builds your faith. Keeps you away from fear. Keeps you away from your pride. He wants to hear you to hear your words when you pray. It's power in prayer. And everything give thanks. You want to know what the will of God is for your life? I'll tell you right here. Are you listening? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Be thankful. Don't have an ungrateful spirit because things aren't going your way or things aren't happening. Amen? I, I'm going through a little struggle in my finances. I only work a few hours a week. I'm working a little bit more now because the girl's the lady that I'm taking her shift over, her dad died in Germany. She had to go over to Germany for a month. But when she comes back, I'm down to 15 hours a week. So am I going to be ungrateful? I'm going to go find another job and supplement the 15 hours. Am I ungrateful for my job? I'm thankful I have work to pay some bills. God gave it to me. God gives you everything. Let's not have a great spirit. Let's thank God for everything. Amen? <clears throat> so revival begins with the individual who will honestly, diligently deal with himself before the Lord. You have to go before God honestly and deal with him. Listen to what he's saying. Excuse me. Piece of flesh hanging from my neck. <laughs> Bother me. You have to listen to what God is saying to you, not what you think He's saying, not in your mind, but through His Word and by His Spirit. And allow Jesus to change you. You have to allow Christ to change you. You cannot change yourself. That's right. That's impossible. You ever tried to do that? Guess what? I'll tell you what happened. You got worse. Right? Don't worry. Without change, there will be no revival. We are to change into His image. From day to day, from glory to glory, into His perfect image. God wants us to change because He wants to bring us revival. He wants to revive you in His Spirit and in His presence. He wants to give Himself to you and fill you up with Him. Fill you with His presence. Oh, to walk in His presence wherever you go. To be that ready person to intervene in somebody's life immediately. You're at the grocery store, some of your friend of yours is talking to you, saying they're sick. Oh, to intervene right there and pray for them. Can I pray for you? I don't know if you believe in Christ, but I do. He can heal you. Let's pray. And just start praying. Yes. And see what God will do. Yes. That's what you do when you're full of God's presence. Talking to people about Christ. You're at a party and, 
It's not a Christian party. You're talk, and there's people there. You just talk to somebody about the Lord. Because He's all over you. And you can just shun the fear. You can shun the anger. And you just talk to people about Jesus. Let them know He loves them. That's what God can do for you. Amen?